What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we just finished doing our live stream reactions on Monday Night Raw, and I had to get on here and, and talk about the two segments that I thoroughly enjoyed. Now, I did miss the first hour of Monday Night Raw. I was helping out a homie, so I wasn't able to uh, be on the live stream at the time. But shout out for uh, shout out to Dub holding down the fort. Uh, he def definitely caught me up with what happened on that first hour. But we got to talk about the John Cena and Austin Theory promo segment. And we also have to talk about the ending of Monday Night Raw with uh, Jay, Jimmy, Solo, and Sami Zayn. That whole situation was just incredible storytelling. So first thing first, we're going to talk about John Cena and Austin Theory. We were back in John Cena's hometown. Uh, it's been a minute since we've seen John Cena on television. So, you know, the crowd was really there to see you can't see me, man. You know what I'm saying? So he came out there, you know, uh, Stu, the cameraman wasn't there. You know, a lot of us were waiting for him to acknowledge Stu. Stu, the cameraman wasn't there at the time. Um, but you know, he still did his thing or whatnot. Crowd was uh, hyped to see him. Austin Theory comes out there. Austin Theory looking cool with the United States Championship. And Austin Theory basically is giving props to John Cena. Like, yo, bro, I used to look up to you. You're the reason why I got into wrestling. And I think it would be a treat if me and you go at it at WrestleMania this year or whatnot. And it's so funny how John, after everything Austin Theory has said to him, he casually, nonchalantly just be like, he just said, no. And Austin like, what? You know, come again? He's like, no. And it was just one of those things where we was like, What's, where's John going with this? You're thinking this is kind of a done deal. It's kind of set up this way that they're going to have a match at WrestleMania. <clears throat> and Austin, uh, John Cena proceeds to, I, I don't know what compelled him. I don't know if the power of thugonomics just, just arose in him at some point. But he just decided to go rogue. And completely eviscerate uh, Austin Theory on the microphone. He basically told him, no, you're not worth my time. You don't have the mind. You don't have the heart. You don't have the, the soul. He pointed out a fan sign <clears throat> in the crowd that says Austin Theory is just a John Cena ripoff. Like, he was just, just, he was cooking, my man. You Have you ever prepared a dish? You preheated the oven to like 450. You prepared the dish. You put it in the oven. You know, you forgot to set the timer, though. You forgot to set the timer. So you accidentally go back to the oven, pull out the dish, and realize it's not cooked all the way through. It's cooked at the top layer, but not cooked all the way through. So you have to put it back in. And that's exactly what happened to Austin Theory. Austin Theory was the dish. John Cena was the oven and repeatedly was cooking my boy on the microphone. It was, I don't know what to say. He was cooking. He basically made him feel like, yo, bro, you're not it. You're not the guy, you know? And after a while, you know, Austin Theory gets mad. So he starts going in on him, you know what I'm saying? Start talking about John Cena's comb over ball spot or whatnot. And all he did was just, you know, preheat the oven again. And John stuffed him right back into the oven. It was just, I, I couldn't believe what I was watching, what they were doing to the United States champion verbally on the microphone on live television, completely destroying him, bro. It was it was just to the point where he's like, bro, I'm trying to save you. John's like, I'm trying to save you. But since you want this match to happen, since you want this to happen, I'm going to go ahead, ask what the fans want. The fans, of course, wanted the match. He's like, but this is on you because, you know, at the end of the day, man, you know, you, you, you don't have it yet. You know, the, they have to pipe in crowd noises for you just to get a reaction. I'm like, whoa, John, what are you doing over here, bro? Are you you bringing a lot of truth to this uh, this this uh, pay-per-view, uh, this, this uh, promo segment here. Whoa, John, calm down. He's already cooked at the proper temperature. Chill. And it was just the way he was really just talking down to Austin Theory and just making him look like a chump. And at the end, he's like, yo, you ain't got the mind. You ain't got the heart. You ain't got it. You don't even have the set down there. I was like, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, bro. So, honestly, I'm looking forward to this match. I want to see how Austin Theory is going to 
bounce back from this because he, I, I mean, he, he got to do something. He got to do something to bounce back from pretty much getting embarrassed like that on the microphone. Granted, it is John Cena, but damn, John, you ain't have to do him like that, my boy. That was cold-blooded. And also, I want to know, who do y'all think should win this match? Me, personally, it only makes sense if Austin Theory wins the match, you know, but it depends on how he wins. Because we know John's not going to be there after WrestleMania like that. He's still going to be doing the Hollywood stuff. So it wouldn't make sense for him to win. But you never know. Maybe they pull an audible. Who knows? But let me know who y'all think will win out of John Cena and Austin Theory for the United States Championship at this year's WrestleMania. And also, if you enjoyed that segment, because I know I did. So we got to talk about the ending segment and the implications. You know, Jay, I mean, Jimmy's in the back with Paul Heyman. And Paul's like, look got a match with Sami Zayn if you don't win this match you know there's gonna be some problems you know you have to deal with with Roman Reigns and also also if you don't get a hold of Jimmy I mean Jay we're blaming it he's gonna blame this on you so they're having a match pretty good match or whatnot and it comes down to the end well at this point uh the ref actually did what refs are supposed to do get people out of ringside that's about to do some shenanigans so he sent solo to the back the referee did so we're getting to the end of the match everything is you know starting to ramp up and then the crowd turns behind him and you see jay walk down through the crowd stands on the announce table you don't know who he's supporting or whatnot maybe he's supporting jimmy or whatnot but with that distraction, Sami Zayn ends up getting a nice, uh, 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 he ends up getting a pin, a pinfall, like kind of a, a pinfall uh, a roll up in a sense or whatnot. And he gets the one, two, three. He wins the match. Jimmy's looking like defeated because he knows he screwed up. Roman's going to be pissed. This is where the storytelling gets oh so good. Triple H, he, he has us where he wants us. <clears throat> So, you have Jimmy, I mean, Jay gets in the ring. He, he, he's looking at Jimmy. They're looking at each other. They're selling the acting. It looks like Jay wants to cry. He's grabbing Jimmy's t-shirt. And then he walks past him. He gets out the ring. And then he stands next to Sami Zayn. And then he hugs Sami, bro. He basically acknowledges Sammy. And the crowd goes crazy. The crowd is like chanting, holy S. The crowd's going crazy. You hear Sammy like, yo, Jimmy, there's still room for you. You you still have a way out, Jimmy. Like, this was so good. Like, they had the crowd just hype for what Jay did. And all of a sudden, like, out of nowhere... Sami Zayn gets super kicked for his troubles. And the crowd is shocked. And I'm like, this is beautiful. I was not expecting them to do the turn right then and there. I was thinking maybe they would do it at uh, on SmackDown. But no, they did the turn right then and there. Sami gets super kicked. And uh, Jay is like, you thought I would turn on my brother? You not family? And uh, they proceed to put him in the ring, give him the beat. Solo Sokoa comes out there. I'm like, oh, they're about to murder Sammy. And it's not Kevin Owens' music you hit. Because Dub was telling me there was an interaction between Kevin Owens and Sammy early in the show. And, and Sammy was trying to extend his hand. But Kevin Owens didn't want to shake. He just rolled out the ring. So you would think Kevin Owens' music would hit. No. It was Cody Rose. Cody Rhodes music hit to save Sammy. This is going to be interesting. This is definitely going to be interesting because now Cody saved Sammy and now maybe their interests will their interests will definitely align for sure even more and Roman may get upset with that because it's like Cody why are you getting involved in this business? Your business should only be between me and you at WrestleMania. It has nothing to do with family issues we're dealing with. Why you get involved in that? That has nothing to do with you. I love it. I love it. I love it. And they're teasing it even more. And I think 
Cody's going to be the bridge to connect Sammy and Kevin Owens together so they can finally take down the bloodline. And we're going to get Sammy and Kevin Owens going for the tag titles and um, and um, Cody Rhodes going for the main titles. I think that's what they're doing. They're piecing it all together. And I enjoyed it. Having Cody Rhodes be the glue to bring Sammy and Kevin Owens together is perfect because now the fans, even though there's still some fans that want Sammy to be the one to dethrone Roman, now everyone has one goal is to make sure that Roman Reigns' bloodline empire falls. And the best way to do that is to take out the Usos. The best way to do that is to take out Roman Reigns. And I like they all have, they at, at, one, at some point, they're all going to have one mission at WrestleMania this year is to take down the bloodline. And people can get behind that whole notion rather than it just being one person's dream. It's everyone's going to try to get behind Sammy, Kevin Owens, and Cody Rhodes to take down the bloodline because they can't do it by themselves. But together, they possibly can. And I love the storyline there. This was great. The parts of Raw that I did see, even though there was some, some snooze fest related segments, for the most part, the stuff I did see, I enjoyed. I thoroughly enjoyed. And uh, I had to talk about this. My voice is a little hoarse because I damn near lost my voice in the last five minutes of the show. That shit was fantastic. I loved it. The crowd had the, they, Triple H had the crowd emotions all over the place. And that was great. So comment down below. Let me know. Which segment did y'all enjoy the most from this Monday Night Raw, man? Did you guys enjoy the uh, the um, John Cena and Austin Theory segment? Uh, did you guys enjoy the, uh, the the ending segment as well? Did you guys, and you know, let me know if you guys enjoy both of those segments equally and any other segments on the show. I know uh, The Miz and uh, Logan Paul <clears throat> and Seth Rollins had a segment as well. So let me know if you guys enjoyed that as well, man. Let me know what was your favorite part of Monday Night Raw and where do you guys think the story is going next? What do you guys think is going to happen on this Friday Night Smackdown, man? Let me know. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel. Road to 150K. And I am still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champion of the world and your inner clutch world heavyweight champion. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.